Ah. Oh, that's better. Just uh, the zips around the back. There. Oh, just trying to get my wetsuit off. Oh, uh, that's better. Here is an important announcement. Tonight's anti-Durin Battalion radio show will not feature anti-Durin Battalion as he is indisposed. He's actually in the fringe, the free fringe. His show has become so popular, it's gone to his head and his brain has exploded. Parts of his mind are now collector's items. And I'm looking at one now. It's very shiny. It's very nice. It's uh, worth an awful lot of money. But the thing is, though, uh, now he has no brain. He is a mindless, gibbering vegetable. He is overqualified to present the next almost hour of the anti durin Battalion radio show. But I think, I think we'll be okay. Meanwhile... It's the end during the Italian radio show, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. And during the Italian radio show, that's right. Hello, hello there. Yes, I am still Elliot Stewart. If you are still listening, then you will realise that I am not alone. No, I am surrounded by the Bon Viveur, which is the actual French. Mark Keegan, say hello, Mr. Keegan. Hello, Mr. Keegan. Hello, yes. well done there. And the amazing lady who has a Bon Volvo, and that's a car. That's uh, the lovely Lulu. Bonjour. Uh, oh, blimey, it's all getting very continental, like a <laughs> breakfast in here. And we have the amazing Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Hello there. Are you a cul-de-sac Music, and I think that might be an insult. What, what's music in French? Uh, we'll come back to that later. We'll, maybe we'll find out later. But, music. Hey, well done, Mark. Now, With a cue. Oh, yes, Mark. What, what's that you're doing over there? Uh, yes, I'm wondering. Mm. What day is it? Try, try and get them all to wonder at the same yes. time, shall we? Yes. One, two, three. What, what day, day is it? It's Monday and not another day. What, what time, time is, is it? it? It's seven o'clock and not another time at all. What, what station, station is it? It's Wandsworth Radio and not any other radio station. Well done, everybody. Give yourself a mild round of applause. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That sounds like there's at least a few dozen interested people here. That's great. And uh, okay, okay, I can see the producer is wanting to reproduce himself, so we'll watch that later on. But people often ask me, where do you come from and why don't you go back there? And other times... They're even less pleasant. I was once told in a child's game at school to climb inside a pile of haystacks. I did so and was immediately sealed in as one haystack square was closed behind. Despite the mocking laughter I could hear from inside my itchy prison, my captors were oblivious to the fact that I, at that moment, invented solitary spiritual confinement or isolation tanks. At that very moment, I closed my eyes and instead of cynically accepting my fate, I went inward and enjoyed the silence and ignored the sniggering and laughter of those buzzing of lesser minds and bigger heads and no brains, for I knew that, well, I'm probably still there now. Um, uh, have you finished, or do we have to sit through more of that? No, thing? more! No, no um, I've finished, sorry, yes. All that happened was that bullies tricked you into a haystack. Into a haystack. A haystack. Yes. <laughs> a haystack, yes. Uh, even you can't cope I, with I it either. I know, I know. It's I emotionally know. <laughs> distressing actually standing next to somebody. Um, haystack, you were you, saying? Yeah, haystack, yes. Yes. Like giant haystack, the 1970s wrestler. I've not been inside him, no, that's just a rumour. Okay. Um, But look, the thing is, Elliot... Yes? You you just can't turn every little childhood incident into a eureka moment. I mean, it's like when you stole those toffos from the shopping Claire and you invented the properties of the stealth jet just by throwing them away with your left hand before your mum could see you. Or there was that time when you fell off your moped in Bury St Edmunds and lay on the pavement watching the feet go by and you came up with Google Maps 30 years early. yes. You need to get your head out of the lab coat and have a drink. Well, I, I don't really drink. Look, I'll knock you up something. I've got a liquidizer, and I know how to use it. We'll make a unique alcoholic smoothie. Can we Can we do that live yeah, on air? I can. I saw a cocktail. What, with Tom Cruise? No, me and the wife. No, I really do need a drink. But, I mean, you must have been drunk at college. I mean, you were one of those long-haired, annoying performing arts students in Ipswich. I mean, that must require a major dulling of the senses. S- uh, oh, snake bite and black. Yeah, I had that, but what's in that? I remember... A lot of being not very clever involving purple. They said I looked like Christopher Lee crossed with Prince. Prince of Darkness. That's what we'll call this smoothie cocktail. Okay. Uh, pass me that bottle over there. All right, yeah. One mark meths. But meths? No, no, I'm just saying maths and South African accent. Okay. Um, I do it ta- then. I could talk about English, but you probably don't want me to change the subject, do you? Okay, no. Oh, it was, oh, it was a joke. Yeah. I, know I, didn't, I know I didn't write that bit. It was a gag. <laughs> Meths, you say? Yes. Um, no. Now, what I need now is a, a dash of Radox, mm. a little splash of Vimto, yeah. a soupçon of... Uh, we're very French tonight, aren't we? Yes. A soupçon of um, something else. Yeah. Shaken, not stirred. That's me, not the drink. Now, if you can just pass me the Asterix of Ghoul Flask. Yeah, very obscure Let's, reference uh, there. Pour it in here. Yeah. Glug, 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 glug. Here we go. Oh. And voila! 
I could do the no- I can do the sound effect. Okay, that doesn't sound like anything. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Okay. I'm, Voila. I'm, I'm not really sure about this at all. Uh, it'll put hairs on your chest. But well, I, I don't want hairs on my chest. Well, it's probably corrosive too, so it's probably got the intensive raw power to burn hairs on the backside of a gnat on the backside of an elephant on the moon. Hey. Hang on. Oh, I've had a quick sip of it, and oh. I think it actually damages a part of your brain that. Um, uh, what Mark, was I talking not, about? You, you don't look very well. Um, are you sure I should drink this? Drink what? Oh, that. Yes. Yes, yes. What? What is it? Yes. Well, you just made it for me. I did? Yeah, you, you just drank some, and now you can't remember making it. I, I don't remember. But, I mean, you said you don't really drink. I, I told you that. Did you? Yeah, yeah, look, I'm pouring it away. I wouldn't do that. Look, look, why should I listen to you? But you don't even know what day it is. It's Monday, and not another look, day. We, we said that, we said that. What time is but it? D- look, look, Mark, Mark, just sit down and, and read this. It'll ground you. Okay, what's this? Paddington and Mrs. Brown's intervention. Oh, I feel better already. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Oh, 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 my brain! Arctica, 3.6 kilometers south of the North Pole, and a long way from Tipperary, a long way indeed. A hardy quartet of polar explorers bravely battle the elements. Now then, men, gather round. My father, the Reverend Brigadier, Lieutenant Stote, always used to say that in times of crisis, a man should get straight to the point. Cut to the chase. Cease prevaricating. Stop messing about. Pull his finger out. Get on with it. Don't delay a moment later or longer. Quick stalling. Waste not a moment more. Proceed immediately and pass the dodgy punty left hand side. Is that why they gave him an OBE? No, that was for his charity work in and around the lower end of High Wycombe. Ah, yes, I remember the Reverend Brigadier Lieutenant and Mrs. Reverend Brigadier Lieutenant with great affection and respect. As I do, but excuse me, Captain Stote, did you not use the word crisis a short while back? Well spotted, Hufflepuff. A crisis has arisen. Whereby someone, or something, an arctic fox perhaps, or a polar expedition leader with self-esteem issues living in the shadow of brilliant parents, for example, has eaten the last of the After Eight Mints. You mean that the After Eight Mints are all gone? But we bought half a dozen multipacks and littles on Baffin Island. And they've all gone. Some <gasps> things on the... Well, so I'll do it again. Too much. The snow is in my eyes. I can't see the script. So things on the confectionery front look bleak. Maybe not so bleak. We've still got some reconstituted curly whirlies and half a star bar. Ah. Um, I'm afraid to report that they also have been eaten by an arctic team with a damaged wing. I'll do it again. The snow, the snow, I tell you. <laughs> by an arctic term with a damaged wing, possibly. Or maybe a divorced explorer whose children haven't spoke to him for five years since the incident with the ice pack in Nando's. I really couldn't say for sure. Maybe it was a pick. I, I can't remember. You can keep your reconstituted curly whirlies, but no after eights whatsoever. That's a real kick in the teeth. Out here, miles from Tesco's and the milky white, whitey whiteness, those dark chocolate squares were like a little splash of colour. Although, they are white when you bite into them, which is ironic when you think about it. Hmm. Now, I know morale has taken a hit with the consumption of our entire chocolate ration by, perchance, a previously undiscovered giant arctic worm, or, I don't know, a a multi... no, uh, I I don't know, a a middle-aged ex-army officer with two previous convictions for shoplifting at Thornton's, far be it for me to speculate, but all is not lost. Do you have a morale-boosting stratagem in mind, sir? Oh, Captain, I do so love your morale-boosting stratagems. What is it this time? A snow lady beauty contest to be judged by Bolton-born TV presenter Vernon Kay and his very attractive TV presenter wife Tess Daly. That's terrific news. I can get them to sign my copy of Tess and Vernon's Guide to Victorian Erotica. I bought it in Waterstones in Putney. 
Three cheers for Captain Stoat's oh, Snow oh, Lady Beauty Contest oh, oh, to be judged by Bolton-born <laughs> TV presenter Vernon Kay and his very attractive TV presenter wife Tess Daly. Hip hip, hip, hip hooray! Hip hip, hip, hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Well, men, we've done it. Four frozen beauties. Horn or Hearn, I don't know, but... I think it's Hewn, Captain <laughs> Stoat. Hewn. Hewn from the snow. Bolton-born TV presenter Vernon Kay and his very attractive TV wife, Tess Daly, will have a tough job picking a winner from all that lot. Well, I've made Grace Kelly dressed as a New York fireman. And I've made the Duchess of Cambridge's publicity-hungry sister, Pippa Middleton. But I ran out of snow, so I gave her Angela Merkel's hair. Hufflepuff? Hmm. I've modelled the body on the body of a model and humanitarian L, the body McPherson. But I'm no good at ladies' faces, so the head is modelled on Ian McCulloch, lead singer with Echo and the Bunnymen. Splendid. I myself have done Bruce Forsyth's ex-wife, Anthea Redfern, in an exact copy of the dress she wore for her first appearance as hostess in the Generation Game. In spring of 1972. I've just received a message, Captain, on the radio. In case you couldn't work out what that sound effect was. was. It seems Tess Daly, the very attractive TV presenter wife of Bolton-born TV presenter Vernon Kay, is unable to attend the judging of your Snow Lady Beauty contest. She's got to give an emergency interview to the Daily Mail about that dress which she wore to the Channel 5 Mid-Afternoon TV Awards. But don't worry, because Vernon Kay is bringing along a replacement in his private helicopter. A replacement? Mm. <laughs> yes, Jeanette Cranky, the schoolboy impersonator from Scottish husband and wife novelty variety act, the Crankies. Jeanette Cranky? But she's a pint size short. <clears throat> Arse. I've said it now, damn, sorry. I would not say arse. I've said it again. She'll barely be able to see above the snow lady's shins. It's a disaster. Crackhorn. Tell the chopper pilot to turn back. Fancy, Hufflepuff, take my pickaxe, the one with the peri-peri stains, and hack all the Snow Lady Beauty contestants into tiny pieces. And what are you going to do, Captain Stoat? Me? I'm going for a stroll. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, there's an arctic seal out there with a box of matchmakers sellotaped to its tiny little furry back. Three cheers for Captain Stoat's brave quest for chocolate mints. Hip hip, hip, hip hooray! Hip hip, hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! I went to the shops and I bought four non flammable matches, three plastic trees, a stolen address book, one singular soiled sock, and an ornate collection of bells. And I have a receipt to prove it, but it held no water. They put, they took my fingerprints. I'm still waiting for them to be returned. I may not be busty, I may not be slinky, and I may not be a woman, but I think... Yeah, I think there's a woman right in front of me. Look, just there. Don't move. <sighs> Careful. She might see us. Ease. Carefully past... What are you doing? Oh. Oh, she's seen us. Um, st- steady, girl. Steady. Uh, I- I'm your friend. I'm your guest, Helen Crouch. What you have to do here is keep eye contact. No, well, e- any any sudden move. Well, who are you talking to? Look, you invited me on your show to talk about feminism and my new range of low calorie shoes. Uh, she looks worried. Don't don't no don't 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 start. If you that. want me to just go, I can. Typical man, you probably ask if you can get me a drink next. Okay, I'm gonna try something. Here we go. Um, okay. Would you like a glass of wine? Oh, well, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good girl. Nice, nice white wine. I, 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 I have a ready meal if you, if you want. Ready meal. Oh God, she's got angry. Okay, uh, uh, back away, back away, slow, back away slowly. Look, should I just say to the earth, a daughter comes out in paperback next week. You act very oddly around women. Was your mother very tall? Huh? I'll I just warm it up for you. It's, it's a low-calorie lasagna. Well, listen. Listeners, it seems your host can't cope with female guests that well, so I may as well have to run this interview myself. Ahem. Ahem. Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello. Well, you're looking nice today. 
Well, that's what I object to right away. You're interviewing a woman and your first question relates to what I'm wearing. <laughs> it wasn't a question, it was a statement. You're just splitting hairs, but that's when it comes down to brass tacks. All women are judged by what keeps them controlled. Clothes, family, sex. Where's the equality? Where's the freedom? Where's my purse? Elliot, oh, what are you doing? Listeners, Elliot has just taken my purse. I'm looking inside. Uh, this is a first for radio. The excavating of a secret zone. Just yeah, yeah, without permission. You are opening my purse without consent. First of all, I can see several objects might be a comb or makeup or, or something uh, i think it's pink don't worry I, I have an emergency cord to lift my fingers just in case it slams shut this is every kind of wrong now elliot i want you to put the purse back down slowly and step away it's dangerous for you to be that <laughs> close to it <laughs> ow, ow! oh such ow, a baby ow my finger it's got my arm ah, ow C- can you help me <laughs> you're talking to me now. Typical man. Uh, Won't ask for directions ow. until you're really lost. It's, ow. it's very simple. Yep. A woman's purses are a gateway to an alternate reality. It's split down the middle of reality and unreality, like the choice between sorbet or homemade ice cream or on a dessert menu. And in this situation, it's best to go for the cheese board. Ow. I, I don't understand. Okay. Yep. To oh. get your arm back, uh, you yep. need to become a woman. But I can park properly and I, I don't need to go to loo with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> that old school cliche propaganda Sorry. disguised as observational wit will only make it worse. Do you feel the eyeliner pencil? Oh, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. mm-hmm. it knows you have at least four more sexist jokes like that and it's not happy. I don't know what to do. Because? Because I'm a... Because you're gone. So uh, um, it's the only way to get your arm back. Because I'm a flawed human being. Yeah, not that. Oh, do, do I have to say it? If you don't, the rest of your body will be sucked. Ooh, uh. I haven't finished. Sucked oh. into a black hole and crushed into a realm where the laws of space and time do not apply. Well, they do, but if you're a woman, you're just a... Uh... Oh. Say it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm just a... Just a man. The, uh, oh, oh, I got my arm free. Oh, I can move my fingers. There you go. Oh. See, only required a simple admission and a suppression of the ego. Oh, I, I, I do feel, I do feel much, much better. I can, I can express my, my feelings. Of, of thank you, Lulu. Thank you very much. I, I, I don't know what to say. I was really scared. I, I thought I'd never. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think we can go for coffee and have a chat? No, I don't find oversensitive men very attractive. They're so wet. Elliot, is that the punchline? Uh, yeah. I think if you were trying to write a satire on how comedy writers can't write for women, it's doubly ironic because my role in that sketch was both a cliched man-hater and a mother role, and I think you revealed your own secret attitude to the fairy sex and the fact that I'm still in the sketch and reading the line, fairy sketch is a dead giveaway and way too meta to be anything but a thinly disguised get-up clause to what was a cheap waste of talent. Do you have to read this? No, you can go now. Do you want anything from the shops? Yeah, I'll have a Coke. Wait, you don't drink Coke? Does that mean that we're still in the sketch? The end. I don't quite know what happened then. That was very, very... I think I think that was Inception 2. That was quite confusing. But not as confusing as what we used to play on the show, which was Ick Muse. We are now de- going to play some Muse Ick. Is that right, Sarah? Or Sarah, Sarah I should say. I do yeah. apologise. Sarah. Good. Always gets my name. I know, but it links nicely to the song you're about to do, you see. Oh, am I going to do that song, am I? I thought you were going to do your first I was, song first. I, I would do that song first, Elliot, Okay. as you have requested yes. that song. Yes, spontaneously. How, how do people feel the show is going while she <laughs> looks for her words? <laughs> in a forward direction? I think in, in time and space, it's mm. definitely going... Forwards. I'm ready. Go for it. I'll go for it. People tend to get my name wrong Hence why I'm singing you this song Hello, my name is Sarah Louise The rumours are false, I don't have fleas I'm a cat person, you see MC stress when I'm being introduced I worry they feel they're seduced We shake hands, they leave the stage I'm concerned that we're now engaged Not that I would encourage that I'm a girl who's best friends with her cat Correcting folk on my name every day It's a nuisance, but hey, that's okay Being called many things can be 
a plus Writing new songs becomes a must It's down to mistakes that make me inspired Luckily it'll be a while before I'm retired So just smile and give me a wave Or better still just call me Dave Sarah, Sahara, Mascara, they're all quite the tradition. And as long as you're smiling, I've completed my mission. Hey! hey! Ooh, yeah. Wow, Thank that's you. pretty good. Are we going to hear some more songs from you later? I think so. I should hope I so. so. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. I got it right. Uh, we were recently privileged on the anti Doom Battalion radio show to have an exclusive interview with the notoriously reclusive French disc jockey and tastemaker DJ Legume. Famed for his reluctance to talk about his work, he has recently published the seventh volume of his autobiography, I Don't Like to Talk About My Work, So Buy This Book Instead, Volume 7. And if that weren't enough, he is shortly to drop his first new album for at least a week. Our work experience girl, Becky was lucky enough to catch up with him in between rehearsals for his new gig uh, in the in-house D- as the in-house DJ, I should say, at Topshop at Brent Cross. So, DJ Legwarmer, a Topshop giving you a staff discount? Uh, my name is uh, Legume, not Legwarmer. I am not uh, some of the 1980s accessories. I am the future compared to everything that has happened previously in the past. Oh, so no discount then? Pa. Discounts are for people who do not want to pay the full price for something. Well, that is a general definition of a discount. I do not bother with definitions. When you define, you can find, and I live without limits. Yeah, and I believe that that was the defence you used when you were recently charged with a number of speeding offences in your Renault Laguna. Oui, but your gendarmes, your British bobbies are more concerned with the prosecuting artists than prosecuting criminals. Oh, I do believe you were pictured kissing a policeman mm. after the search of your Hoxton flat failed to provide any forensic evidence linking you to the disappearance of your bitter rival DJ Lemongrass. That was not a kiss of gratitude. It was an ironic uh, placement of my lips on the face of an uh, face uh, the, uh, of the authority figure. Quite. So, um, uh, tell us about your new album then. It is exclusively available for one ninety nine at Aldo's. And could you tell us some more? Naturally more. Uh, Aldo's have at least 500 stores in England and Wales. Many have free car parking, uh, so just find your nearest branch and go and buy a copy. You will find a good selection of foodstuffs, beer, wine, spirits, not forgetting an extensive range of household cleaning products. See it bang mixed with star drops is surprisingly good for getting the blood stains out of cupboards and i believe you have some uh, special guests on the album indeed you know the black eyed peas whoa you mean you've got will i am and, and fergie on your new album no i have all those on brand tint mushy peas they are featured on the opening track an emd cover version of the kinks uh, classic older uh, open all day and most of the night. And what does a tin of Aldi's own brand mushy peas sound like? Like the perfect accompaniment. You mean they complement your cutting edge dance music? No, they are the perfect accompaniment to Aldi's frozen fish and chip supper. But only two, and for only two of your English pounds or three for a fiver. Uh, okay, well, I understand you recorded a duo with Noel Gallagher, which didn't make it onto the album. I am a big fan of Noel's work with Oasis, so I think it would be a good idea if he wrote an original song for the album. But I remember he doesn't write original songs, he just does Beatle pastiches in a Mancunian accent. So then we decided it would be fan to do a cover version, a uh, covered something I love, that we both love, Orville song. I see. So the track's not being released as a mark of respect to the late Keith Harris? Uh, no, it is not being released because No Gallagher wanted the album to be exclusively available for only seven ninety nine in Asda. Right, well, next week I'll be talking to Talk Talk before heading off to Talk to Talking Heads and then heading north to meet the beautiful South. <laughs> Airplane Bucket, 
uh, Orange Beauty and the Zip Boys, Letter M, You Done Me Wrong, all top 10 hits for our next guest, not in this country, but still, can any of us claim to have had a number 17 hit in Spain in 1992 with Pineapple Chunks of Love? Well, nor, well I can't, uh, neither can our next guest, Rango Space. And the wife, I brought my wife. Good evening. Oh, uh, uh, well, it, it is now. Cool your loins, man. Peace and love. Back off Casanova. She's mine. Oh, I don't mind, really. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, what was, your, what was your name, love? Well, Ranga's nicknamed me Finger Crossed or Wifey Five. Oh, but my real name That's is... fair enough. I can't afford a divorce. It's very possessive. Well, both of you here, uh, it does kind of take the edge off, because uh, seriously, I'm a gog. Um, is that a racist term? Let the man do his job. You're probably going to ask, are you going to get the band back together? Are you? No. Hey, let me answer, love. No. Well, what with John Sponge being dead and Harry, George, Harry Palm being dead? And Paul McRidge, T.T. being dead. Paul McRidge, T.'s not dead. I'm pretty sure he is, love. Did you put all of the little bottle in the big bottle? In his champagne, yes. Then if he's not dead yet, he will be in the next 24 hours. Does that answer your question? Um, okay, so he's n- not not dead? Oh yeah, he's alive, alive, alive as a doornail. Uh, but, but I thought... Um, you thought nothing, my friend. No, if you play Gooseberry Flatlands from the 1967 backwards, it does say, Paul isn't dead, but he will be. Then he will be bumped off by the drummer of this band for the insurance and he'll deny it in the interview 30-ish later. No, yes. no, that's an urban myth, love. It says, um, Paul isn't Fred, but he will be. Then he will be jumped off by the summer of this sand for the sin poipers, and he'll deny it in interviews 30-ish years later. Now that, that doesn't make any sense. Well, we were all high then. Who knows what it means? But I strongly deny I've bumped off Paul for the insurance. But do you, do you take drugs? Mainly Betty. Who's Betty? Betty's Midlers. Betty Midlers, Midlers, Middle Drugs. A Kiwi smoothie or a good book. I recommend The Moon's a Balloon by David Niven. That'll send you off. I do think you should mention his acting career now. My lovely Ranga did a great, coveted golden ram for his moving portrayal of Marvin the Martian and the man who fell over and stunned the world as aqua potato Robin Lump string, the one-legged builder who lived in a house, a very big house in the country, in Michael Bay's remake of Gone with the Wind and more explosions and Megan Fox for some reason. That was you, wasn't it, dear? No. <laughs> yes, yes, you were. You were the old singing, old talking dragon in Peter Jackson's Hobbit 4, Return to the King and Return of the King. That was a bloke from Manfred, 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 Man, Manfred, Man, Fred, Man, Man. Is there anything you regret in your career? Apart from the last line, uh, <laughs> marriage. <laughs> but seriously, folks, yeah. no, no, no regrets, as they say in France. Now, w- w- well, hang on, what about shoving that moose? It was a tax dodge. Don't speak for me, love. It was a tax dodge. And, and it's a bit of a personal gripe here, what about converting your house in Suffolk into a, a massive pair of breasts? And that thatched entrance is something rather feminine and medical, let's face it. <laughs> You built it! Oh, darling! Now, I live in Suffolk and I see that monstrosity every day. I cycle to work. Monstrosity? That house with its impressive concrete bosom covered in two enormous circus tents is based on the love encounters of my missus. I even put the love bites in from our time in Bermuda. We've never been to Bermuda. Well, mon- monstrosity or not, I've got a reply back from Suffolk County Council from a letter that I sent requesting the removal and destruction of your inappropriate lady house and i'm gonna open it now and see how you feel about that it says hello rango can you say hello to all the girls from suffolk county council p.s do you remember us all from bermuda Mm -hmm. love and kisses hey look now love love it's not what it sounds like it was years ago back in the 60s how many girls work at suffolk county council at least 27 they were very demanding poor dear so, when's the album out? Next week. All right, love. Next week, it's called Ow. Why? It's based on, like, a half thing my cat said. Well, thank you, Rango. And thank you, Mrs. Rango. Actually, it's Hillary. Hillary Max Dad Muffins. You know too much, Mr. Interviewer. You must die! Ow! That's got him. Now for the insurance. <laughs> Previously on Bloody Awful. 
it would seem the spirit of darkness inhabits objects owned by the descendants of South American traveling salesmen. And that's not the half of it. Nigel! Put put that down! It, it doesn't know where you've been! I would like to help, but as you see, I'm covered in jam. We must leave this house of sin as soon as I've washed me hands. Hang on, I've dropped the soap. That's not soap. You mean... Yes! I've never heard it called that before, probably because I wasn't listening. And now, the conclusion. Gentlemen, what you see before you is a prime example of primitive woman. See the trunk, the tusks, and the tendency to eat currant buns. First, I will add the numbing agent, then a drop of that spicy sour green stuff you get with takeaway pizza. And behold! Sir! You have produced, well, not only something that's undesirable and wrong, but exotic and disarming and against nature itself! You fool, you blind fool, you can't see! Uh, y you know I am blind. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to be personal, I didn't notice. I, I have a seeing eye dog, just there. I, I thought it was somebody else's. I, I wasn't having a pop at our blind or partially sighted members of society. I meant that what I produced was great, and if people couldn't see its brilliance, they must be uh, uh, um, blind. Yeah, I, oh, I, sorry. I got what you mean, sir. I, I just thought it was insensitive how you said it. I mean, you resurrect the dead. You crossbreed furniture with fish, and yet you have at no point attempted to cure blindness. It's a long-term problem. Are you saying I'm being short-sighted? Uh, I mean, uh, that uh, I have a lack of vision? Oh. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to keep saying oh. eye-related puns. You know I'm not the kind of person to do that. Do I look like such oh. a man? Well, let me feel your face with this tenderizing hammer. You want a quick butcher's? Gentlemen, please. <gasps> Good God! A woman! Get out, madam! Do you not realize it is bad luck to have a woman on board a ship? But we're not on a ship. She's right, you know. Sir, do you not know it's bad luck to agree with a woman? <laughs> I've got hysterical. Do you not know it's bad luck to agree with a woman inland? Well, pardon my interruption. I shall be brief. Ah! The harbour where we're at least 50 foot from, at the other side, has been infected by feral swans and mutant bees intent to ever thrown the government and unleashing a demon. Poppycock! Balderdash! Yes, your pet poodles Poppycock and Balderdash have fallen under the spell of the feathered fiends. My doggy woggies? No! I suppose it's time to reveal that I am not blind. I am not British. I am a swan. A beautiful swan. Forward, my white brothers and sisters! As I am a bird, this is not a racist statement, but my white brothers and sisters, I, I'm just a bird, I'm a white bird. No longer will swans be forced to wear saddles and compete in sports to entertain crowds in the zoo with their tea parties or be shorn of their coats and put in tanks and fed fish food. When has that been happening? That never happens. I think you're quite messed up in the head. Silence! Human female, I am a beautiful gliding bird that is that is graceful personified. You're just wrong, mate. You mean you're not blind after all that ranting earlier on? No. What was the point of going on and on about my social faux pas if it wasn't actually offending anyone? Swans, blind people? What a waste of time. If this is what the world is going to become under swan rule, I'm out of here. Pass me my blunderbuss. Shooting yourself will be no answer. We will simply stuff you uh, in throw cushions and comfy pillows. Well, that won't work. Feathers make those items soft. Human skin will just make them scratchy and flimsy. Ha ha! Ah, but the irony! There is no irony. Now get your swan army to stand down, or I'll unleash a banshee scream as I am half witch, half demon, half rug. That's three halves. It's unnatural. It's the maths of the devil. If only it were that simple. Next week on Bloody Awful. No, Nigel, that's my slipper! We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. The arch criminal known as the Tinned Peach is believed to be behind a string of supermarket attacks. Wow, Debbie, an arch criminal called the Tinned Peach attacking supermarkets. That sounds like a job for our alter egos, Bottom City's most feared crime fighting duo, Hat Girl and Dobbin. Oh, the security guards at Asda. I mean, the bloke goes around wearing a giant tin with his face painted bright orange. It should be quite easy for them to spot. Don't you think, Nigel? But what if he decides to hide out in the tin fruit aisle? He'd be right at home, then. 
But if I were to stealthily creep along the aisle making my sonic whinnying noise, nee, 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 he'd be forced out into the open. Yes, unless he stuck his fingers in his ears. I mean, that sonic whinny of yours, it's not very loud. Doesn't need to be. It's all about the pitching. Really? And how many arch criminals have you ever come using your sonic whinny? Well, there was a clown last week. No. He tripped over his clown shoes. Yes, but only after I disorientated him with a couple of my sonic whinnies. I think he disorientated himself because he was laughing so much. <laughs> Are your pathetic sonic whinnies? <laughs> no, 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 that, that, that was a clown's evil laugh. Whatever. Oh no, the milk's gone off. Better nip to the corner shop and get some more. Shall we take your hatmobile? You mean my Honda Accord? Exactly. <laughs> the initial spelt H-A, the first two letters of hatmobile. Do you remember when we were being pursued by methylated spirits man and we fired that smoke bomb at him from the rear of the Hatmobile causing him to swerve off the road? That was my fault exhaust before I got it repaired at Quick Fit. And methylated spirits man was three and a half times over the drink drive limit. It's no wonder he crashed. Meanwhile, in the bottom city corner shop... All the big supermarkets have wised up to my nefarious activities. But the tin peach will not be denied... Here in the bottom city corner shop, I'm sticking a pin in all of the plastic milk bottles so they'll leak when you pick them up. ding a ling uh. Excuse me, miss. No dogs allowed in the shop. You'll have to tie them outside. I'm not a dog. I'm Dobbin the Wonder Boy pantomime horse. You're embarrassing me. Just grab some milk and let's get out of it. All right, then. Ooh, it's all leaky. Then pick up another one. That's leaky, too. <laughs> That's and le- so... Uh, I was building up to that. <laughs> and so are all the other ones. The, the tin peach. peach. Yes, I am indeed the tin peach. But once I was just an ordinary shelf stacker until that fateful night when I was struck by a collapsing display of tin peaches. One of the tins was a bit rusty, probably because it was radioactive. When I regained consciousness, I found I had absorbed all of its power. I can go any place a tin peach can go, or even a tin of peaches would want to go. Shops, mainly, which it was fine by me because I worked in a shop, but within days of coming off the painkillers, I was sacked from my job as a shelf stacker. Management said I was scaring the customers, but I knew they were fearful of my new found power. And so I vowed to wreak revenge on the food retail sector! You fiend, take that! Ah, you just do a yogurt at me! And there's plenty more where that came from. No, there's not. Not unless you want to pay for them first. And where's all that spilt milk come from? I am a, the master criminal mastermind behind the attack on your milk stocks! Really? Well, I'm a hard-working shopkeeper with a baseball bat under the counter. So you better clear up the mess and pay for my damaged stock. But, but I, I don't have any money. In that case, you can help with a shelf stacking until you've paid off your debt. But shelf stacking is my first love. But now I can give up my life of shop-related crime. Well, that's another case all wrapped up for Hat Girl and Dobbin. Not quite, Dobbin. We've still got another mystery to solve. And what's that, Hat Girl? The mystery of what I'm going to put in my coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Tune in next week, same hat time, same hat channel, for the continuing adventures of Hat Girl and Dobbin. Right, that was very, very exciting, but not as exciting as what I'm about to say now. Sarah, do you have another fantastic song? I, I can't hear you. Say it again, madam. I do, there you Elliot. Are. There I am. I do, yes. L- let's hear it then. Okay, it's called Playing for Fun. I'm not very good at tuning my guitar. As a musician, I won't get very far. I do like playing. That's the brunt of it. I couldn't give a damn if people think... I can't swear, can I, Elliot? Alanis Morissette, Bruce Springsteen, any of those guys from the beloved A-Team Bound to play better than dear old me, well never mind, I quite like the pity I'm having fun, writing a song, I'm enjoying myself, how can that be wrong? Twinkle the kitten, she has to tolerate when a new song is brewing, her Sheba must wait Alanis Morissette, Bruce Springsteen, any of those guys from the beloved A-Team Bound to play better than dear old me, well never mind I could move to Sydney. G'day mate, how's it going? 
I've been learning a new language. I'm not Mrs. Domestic, you probably can tell. I'm singing to you, you're thinking you're in hell. Dance a little boogie if you feel in the mood. I'll try to sing in tune and avoid being sued. Alanis Morissette, Bruce Springsteen. Any of those guys from the beloved A team found to play better than dear old me? Well, never mind. I'm not auditioning for Glee. Are you shocked to hear that, Elliot? I'd love to be like Katie, Perry, not Price. She's so much cooler than Vanilla Ice. I'm hardly a pro, I don't play for money. But a smile would be nice if you think my lyrics are funny. Alanis Morissette, Bruce Springsteen. Any of those guys from the beloved A team found to play better than dear old me? Well, never mind. I'm a little bit odd. Apparently. Who thought I messed up the rhyming? <laughs> I'm a poet. <laughs> I just didn't know it. <laughs> but I can show it. <laughs> I'll end it there before I blow it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Thank Three. you. Hey, yeah. Well, I was just going to um, uh, say, uh, our musical guest tonight, actually, before she does another song, oh. uh, has um, an another passion. And I'm sure she won't mind me telling the listeners. Oh, firemen. No, no, cats. Oh, firemen dressed as cats, sexy, not the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> That's not my thing at all. No, when I said passion, I meant, you know, like a hobby, not like a craving or a longing, you know, just a thing that keeps you going. Oh, it does. Can you imagine being rescued from a burning building by a big ginger tom? Uh, can you explain to me why they are popular with ladies? Firemen? Cats! The, look, is it the independence, the style, the, the tail, the licking? The, see, I've said licking and you're back to firemen again, aren't you? Sorry, it's very hard. It doesn't help that you are dressed as a fireman, and Mark over there is too, and Lulu is as well. A, a fire lady, surely? No, she's grown a moustache and big, strong arms, everything. Um, <laughs> Sarah, look, none of us are dressed as firemen. I, I really think you need to see someone. A fireman. No! Look, <laughs> look, can we just get back to cats? I'll try. Cats. Fire. Cats. Furry mm. man. Moggy McCavity. Lloyd Webber. I'm thinking of Lloyd Webber dressed as a fireman. Oh, that seems to have done it. Nothing sexy about that. Good. However. Seriously? I'm imagining someone with Lloyd Webber's money and influence buying a house full of cats that's suddenly ablaze. And who's that coming to rescue me on his massive fire truck? Why, it's... Alan Carr. Oh, you've spoiled it now. Okay, look, Sarah, look, uh, I mean, look, Sarah, Sarah yeah. what are you doing with those matches? Oh, nothing. Look, put the waste paper bin down. Oh, damn. Look, can I just start a little fire? No. Or, or, or look, there's a fire alarm there. Pass Get me that the lighter. Chair. Oh, look. All I need to do look, is set Sarah, up the look, look, if, sensor, look, Elliot. Look, if, it's, if it's that important, look, if you, need, if you really need to medically encounter a fireman tonight, we could all go down to the fire station, okay? It's not the same. I want to be rescued whilst holding at least 12 kittens and then he takes me to his island and finds me a bra with no lace on it and lots of books I've never read that are really trashy but satisfying and he serves me gin and tonics from coconut shells and is continuously building something that involves him picking up great big stones and banging them together for hours. That's all. A simple dream. What happened to the kittens? They mutate. They become our protectors. Our protectors. They grow wings and replace the seagull population. Huge flocks of cat, like flying feline vultures, encircling our love nest. Any unwelcome guests, they swoop down and either bite their heads off with their lion jaws or rip them to shreds with their catty talons. Talons. Meanwhile, what what's your hunky beefcake fireman doing while all this is going on? <laughs> Still banging those two rocks together over and over again. It's very romantic. And how long do you spend in this frankly disturbing paradise? Oh, a week. A week? Yeah, I book a week. Seven days is enough. You don't want to get bored. I did all that stuff for fortnight last year and by day nine, I'd had an off. There was a cat poo in the trees. I went off gin and the two rocks thing came, you know, somehow lost its charm. And the, the fireman? Oh, let's just say he's still there. Just under a lot of sand. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Sarah, for letting us visit your unique passion. Yeah. Uh, look, can someone put... Sarah, look, stop rubbing those two sticks together and just do another song. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, you've got another song for us, I, I believe. This is about um, a guy that I, I dated some years ago. He wasn't a fireman, though. Okay, but maybe he is now. Well, I doubt that. I think he's an accountant <laughs> still. But anyway, here we go. Just warming up. <laughs> you know, it's need a hose. It does.
doesn't bother me. I'm single at 30. I think it's better this way. My previous guy idolized Doris Day. I looked in my wardrobe, my clothes had gone. I turned around on him, they were on. <laughs> he smiled sweetly, asked me if they suited him. I returned the smile back and punched him in the chin. <laughs> I don't condone violence, by the way. It's just the dress did look lovely on him. Even after I'd lost weight. It doesn't bother me. I'm single at 30. I think it's better this way. My previous guy. <laughs> He wore oil of ole. You see, I wondered where it was all disappearing to because he used to blame the dog. <laughs> he didn't have a dog. What? <laughs> he obviously thought I was barking mad. My little chick, no? I'm a comedian, apparently. His DVD collection said it all. Sex and the City covered the wall. Moulin Rouge, Lady and the Tramp, obvious signs. <laughs> you see, I thought he was just camp. Or constipated. He was full. I can't swear. Can I? Can I? <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I'm single at 30. I think it's better this way. My previous guy. <laughs> he didn't like foreplay. Put the radio on and listen to Elliot. We're still pushing buttons. <laughs> that I had nothing to do with it. His crush developed for Brad Pitt. I should have seen the signs, but I'm a little bit silly. If only I'd known sooner he liked another Willy. Oh, this is called the Willy song, ladies and gents. I have thought long and hard about the title. No swearing, Elliot. It doesn't bother me. I'm single at 30. I think it's better this way. My previous guy. <laughs> He was gay. Did you pick up on that? Yeah, he picked up men. It's not kind of like a hobby I had in life. I'm a little bit dubious of men right now. Hence the reason I'm a silly cow. Oh, that's my Alanis Morissette impression. <laughs> You're very welcome. I have dated guys who are keen. But then I've got great boobs and I keep my teeth clean. <laughs> Don't want to brag. Oh, I can get references from a dentist. <laughs> oh, from my teeth, obviously. <laughs> well, actually, you see a group on deal, you've got to grab it, haven't you? <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I'm not 30. I'm actually past 35. And even after all the dinners, I've made my Andy, boyfriend of six and a half years, just saying. <laughs> he still managed to stay alive. Oh, he's so talented. So remember girls, boyfriends, they're not just for Christmas, <laughs> they're for life. Handcuff them, it makes them feel very, very secure. Thank you very much. Hey. Well there you go, now we, we haven't discussed actually the thing that we've got a few more minutes to do, is I did say a few weeks ago, that, and I discovered that we are part of the Marvel Universe. I was approached by a man wearing an eye patch asking me to assemble. It could have been Pirate Day at Ikea, but I haven't discovered what magical or magical uh, superhero powers that we all have. So maybe with the last five minutes to go or so, uh, Mark, what amazing powers do you have? Have you discovered that you have powers in the last 50 minutes? I have, yes. I have the ability to see through windows. Okay, that's amazing. Any particular sort of window, well, glass I mean, ones? Maybe? No, no, I mean, the, that sounds the, like a the, so the software package, I can see through what they're trying to do, selling us new versions. Oh, every political. Of years, you know. Satire, look at that. Right Biting them, satire. Yes. Okay, so Lulu, what amazing powers do you have? I'm, I'm squeaky chair girl. You're squeaky, and I've noticed that throughout the whole show. We were really sorry. Is that, and you don't squeak, even have a chair, squeak, which is squeak. I know, that's I'm amazing. Up. It's it really is ironic. Definitely. So you basically got a mouse and a chair, and you got them to uh, cross fertilize, yeah, and that, that's what you can do. It's quite an evil power. So, um, it is, isn't it? but that's that's pretty good. I can see what you're doing. Don't make, oh, good, 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 put it put it put it down. Squeak squeak. squeak. Okay, yeah, but the mouse is enjoying it. That's what's consuming. Uh, really <laughs> bad. Okay. Now, yeah. Sarah, obviously yeah. you have a musical power, but what mm. magical superpower? I've got to stop saying magical. There's nothing magic about Marvel about the fact they've made money out of making the same movie over and over again <laughs> uh, so uh, we are part of the Marvel Universe what part of your body is part of the Marvel Universe 
Well, it's not really my body, but I can understand cats. Okay, because you have their language. How many cats do you have at I home? I just have one, but we've got two um, living in our in our little complex where I live in in sunny Hartford, and um, I, I can sense when they're not getting on because they hiss at each other. <gasps> yes, and I can sense when they are getting on because normally my little cat Twinkle is in the house. And we, we have your cat Twinkle here. We're just going to hand you over. There, there oh, you go. Twinkle. Ca- oh, careful. Yeah. Careful with it. Ma- Mark, yeah. careful. Yeah. Oh, God, that was close. Okay, Mark. That, that, that noise of meowing was Mark chatting up a cat live on air. <laughs> so I think if, if any time now it's time to wrap up the show because we've discovered that Mark has the superpower of arousing cats. Perfect. Oh, oh that's amazing. What a punchline, yes. <laughs> and that's the that's the wrapping up the end of the show. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Lulu. Ooh. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, me, because I will be here next week in a pre-recorded way. So that's it. Goodbye. Farewell. Go away. <laughs> we love you. Bye. Italian radio show, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. And Once was radio